we begin with breaking news. Even in the day, like, I, I don't want to walk alone by myself. We have a number of staff kind of feeling not super safe being out, especially at night. It's better safe than sorry. Fear and major concern tonight in the city of Davis after three stabbings in less than a week, two of them deadly. A woman who survived providing key information to authorities. Witnesses saying the latest attack happened just feet away from them. I felt like he was lurking around my tent. I heard some sticks snapping. I heard my tarp snap. Next thing you know, I hear her screaming, oh God, help, please, he's here. Now tonight, UC Davis police say that they have not ruled out that these could be unrelated attacks, but they also say that the description of the suspect has been substantially similar. And not to mention all of these attacks have happened within a week at night and within three miles of each other. On Thursday, David Bro's body was found in Central Park. Then Saturday night, 20 year old UC Davis student Kareem Abu Najim was found dead at Sycamore Park. Then just last night, just before midnight, a woman was assaulted at a homeless camp off of 2nd and L Streets. Now in that attack, police say a 64 year old woman was stabbed right through her tent. She is currently in the hospital. Police say she is alert and talking and police say she described a man with a light complexion and curly hair who is between five foot six and five foot nine inches tall with a thin build. Now that match, that matches up with the description given by a witness in the second stabbing. I know that our community is struggling and there is a, a lot of fear out there. Tonight, we're following the urgent search for that suspect as police warn people to be on high alert, saying they should not be out at night, especially alone. UC Davis has now made changes to protect students and some businesses closed early. A lot to cover here. We have live team coverage for you right now with crews throughout the city for you tonight. Let's start with KCRE 3's Ty Steele live at the Davis Police Station. What's the latest, Ty? Law enforcement is a 24 hour a day operation and that could not be more true than here at the police headquarters in Davis, where there are a number of homicide detectives working on adrenaline and caffeine right now, trying to find the person or people responsible for whoever committed these brutal stabbings, three of them in less than a week. We heard from the police chief over at the city council meeting that happened about 45 minutes ago, that meeting wrapping up. We heard from the police chief and he mentioned, he gave us some more context on exactly what is facing the department during this investigation, 300 plus tips from the community related to these stabbings in just a few short days, emails, calls and videos sent to the department. Each one of those tips has to be diligently gone through and responded to in a timely manner. Easier to do during the daytime operations when they've got more behind the scenes staff to go through those tips. More challenging during the evening hours when there are more calls for service related to other crimes that may be happening in the city. We also heard from the mayor of Davis and he had some great appreciation for law enforcement and the greater Davis community. Take a listen. I know that we have um, so many folks who are so dedicated to uh, uh, keeping our community members safe and to solving these crimes, bringing to justice the perpetrator. Also at that city council meeting, we heard from a number of community members in person and also many who called in. That is what they, uh, the mayor had asked folks to do, call in out of an abundance of caution. A uh, big community response. KCRA 3's Leanne Denyer joins us live now at City Hall just after this meeting wrapped up with a community response. Leanne, what can you tell us? Yeah, we certainly heard from people who are concerned, and you'll notice this here. There's a notice saying that tonight's city council meeting was going to be entirely focused on this series of stabbings over the last few days. People in attendance were able to hear directly from the police chief as well as share their ideas and concern for the community. Item one, an update and briefing. The Davis City Council wiped its initial agenda for its council meeting Tuesday, instead dedicating the meeting in its entirety to discussing a series of stabbings in the city in recent days. I'm very worried. I'm very worried because they're human beings and they have feelings. Linda Hernandez wanted to be there, she says, to speak on behalf of those who couldn't, voicing her concern for the third victim who was stabbed Monday at a homeless encampment, the only victim who survived. She's going to have trauma and that's real and she's going to have physical pain. The Davis police chief outlined the timeline of the three stabbings that killed two men and left a woman in critical condition. The chief says while it's highly plausible the attacks are related, they're not ruling anything out at this point. I've been following this for the last couple of days, obviously, 
and it was just very helpful. I think that his police department, especially Darren Pytel, who I've known for many years, is doing an incredible job given the circumstances. The conversation and concern during public comment largely revolved around resources for Davis's unhoused community and calling for unity during an emergency. The hatred um, and definitely, you know, the killing of people, hurting other people is not something that we promote, you know, as a whole. So it's um, inadmissible, it's shocking, it's traumatizing. But also I know that my community won't stand for that. And people are not going to let fear take over. And the mayor told us just a short time ago that just today they received calls and emails from people who live here in Davis asking how they can help. And during the meeting, they did share two organizations that they are working with, Davis Community Meals and Housing, as well as Communicare Daytime Respite Center. They said that people who want to help show their support, especially to the unhoused community here in Davis, to contact those two organizations. Again, the mayor saying he was so grateful for all of the support and the hard work of law enforcement in Davis. Leon Denier, KCRA 3 News. Yeah, thank you. It really has been beautiful to see the outpouring of people that just want to help not only to solve this case, but to support those vulnerable members in our community. Another aspect to this is the business community. And we heard from the Chamber of Commerce, a representative there at the meeting, talking with law enforcement, talking with the mayor, and figuring out a plan of action. In the meantime, there are a number of businesses that, despite the fact there's no curfew, have taken it upon themselves to bring in some preemptive measures to increase the safety for both their employees and the customers. We go now to KCRA3's Orco Mana live for us in downtown Davis with what the business community is doing to, uh, to stay safe and to keep everybody else safe as well. Orco? Well, Ty, there's definitely a sense of fear out here in downtown Davis. Everyone on high alert after this string of stabbings. We have noticed fewer people out and about. It is raining right now, but even before the rain started to fall, we did see fewer people than normal. So starting tonight, some businesses are adjusting their hours so that customers and employees can feel safe. Rocknasium, a rock climbing gym in downtown Davis, is a place to have fun and stay fit. But with three nighttime stabbings in Davis, two of them deadly in less than a week, everyone is on edge. So it's pretty freaky. You know, it's like literally hitting close to home. For the security of customers and employees, General Manager Amani Latif tells me the gym is shutting its doors at 8 p.m. on weeknights instead of 11 p.m. We have a number of staff kind of feeling not super safe being out, especially at night, so we're just trying to like mitigate that. Woodstock's Pizza is also closing early for the foreseeable future at 9 p.m. instead of midnight, and they won't take delivery orders after 8 p.m. <laughs> The Davis Farmers Market, scheduled for Wednesday from 3 to 6 p.m., has been canceled. It was set to happen at Central Park, the location of the first deadly stabbing. We just thought that, um, you know, just out of an abundance of caution, let's make it as safe as possible for everybody involved. Many Davis residents agree with the decision. To me, it makes sense. Nobody wants to be at risk. And I understand if people feel, feel more comfortable closing earlier. Yeah, definitely a lot of residents planning to play it safe. We do want to mention that even though the Davis Farmers Market for tomorrow was canceled, the market that's scheduled for Saturday is still going on as planned and police will be present. Reporting live in Davis tonight, Orco Mana, KCRA 3 News. You know, looking at what those business owners and those employers are doing, it makes a lot of sense when it comes to what we're dealing with in the city of Davis. You can't talk about the city of Davis without also talking about UC Davis, the university that defines the city in many regards. Joining me now is KCRA3's Melanie Wingo. She has been following up with the university, had a press conference earlier tonight talking about what they're doing to keep staff and students safe. Melanie. Yeah, you know, Chancellor Gary May from the University of Davis uh, said today that the boundaries between the city of Davis and the campus of University of California at Davis are what he calls soft boundaries, blurred yeah. boundaries. And so in that regard, he is addressing those very real safety and security concerns that are happening among students and staff members on campus tonight. Crime near campus keeping UC Davis students and staff on edge. It's just surreal like 
it's just hard to process. Campus community members now thinking twice about when or if they need to be out at night after three stabbings near the university campus in just the past week. At night, that's for sure. Like as soon as the sun goes down, I don't want to leave. Even in the day, like I, I don't want to walk alone by myself. Campus leaders addressing fears Tuesday. So I just want to acknowledge that the campus community feels uh, anxious and frightened right now. Announcing immediate steps to enhance safety and security, including additional university police officers on patrol, including reinforcements from UC San Francisco and UC Berkeley, extended hours for the Campus Safe Rides program, and a shift to remote instruction for all courses that end after 6 p.m. People are generally scared, they're concerned. They're trying to understand what is going on in the city of Davis. Campus police sharing fears expressed to them as many students scale back plans around their college town until an arrest is made. It can wait a couple weeks when this all hopefully gets resolved. The university also pointing out tonight that it's looking into temporary lighting to increase visibility in spaces across the campus where lighting may be a bit more obscured. And also, Ty, I would be remiss if I did not mention the university staff mentioning today that it realizes the stress and anxiety of someone being on the loose right. related to these crimes just neighboring the campus. Um, they encouraged everyone to reach out, get help, maximize those mental health resources that are available to staff members and students and uh, take advantage of that because in this time they said it's okay. It's needed and they get that. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Police chief also mentioning that there are some extra resources at UC Davis when it comes to those shuttle buses that you also mentioned uh, in that story. So yep. great help for the students, um, but definitely uh, a tense and anxiety filled time for everybody involved. We are live out here at the uh, police headquarters in Davis where there we are told detectives inside right now working around the clock. Some of them actually sleeping underneath their desks during the evening hours in between shifts just so they can get back up and get back to work. Back to you, Edie and Golston. Yeah, it's been swift reaction all the way around. Of course, somewhat comforting to see that for the folks there. And of course, appreciate the coverage out there that we're providing too. So Ty, thank you. And we wanted to show you this. Livecopter 3 flew over Central Park earlier tonight. And you can see a memorial for the first victim, David Bro, continues to grow. He was at times homeless, also known to many as the compassion guy. And he helped to get that bench placed right there at that corner. He was often seen there asking people what compassion means to them. We are continuing to follow this still unfolding stories. Police look for that person or possibly people responsible for these stabbings. You can download the KCRA 3 app for breaking news alerts on any late developments in this investigation.